Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the latest update to the G1000 NXI mod by the working title team. It's on version 090 now, and this is coming out the same day as the Sim Update 7, or Game of the Year, release of Microsoft Flight Simulator. First, we're going to look at two new features on the map settings. One is called Selected Altitude Intercept Arc, also known as the Banana, and the second one is Track Vector. So I'm going to go to the MFD by hitting Control 2 on my keyboard, and then pressing the menu button to bring up the page menu, then hit enter to go into the map settings. Now use the FMS knob to scroll down to the bottom two settings here, which are new. Here you can see track vector and selected altitude arc. You can use the outer and inner knob to change these settings to on. And then you'll immediately see, in my case, the banana or the selected altitude arc. And this is showing us where we are predicted to finish our climb or our descent. You can see I'm currently at a selected altitude of 12,000 on the autopilot and climbing, so it's showing roughly where we'll be on the map when we complete that climb to 12,000. The second setting that we turn on is called Track Vector, and this draws a line from our current location to represent a predicted ground track based on our speed and our rate of turn. So in this case, I'm turning to the right, and you can see that the ground track or the track vector shows a right-hand curve to show us a prediction of where we'll be if we continue that turn. If you go back to the settings for this feature, there is a duration option here that defaults to 60 seconds. And I just want you to know that if you change this to something greater than 60 seconds, you will lose the curved or the turn prediction that the line shows. So anything over 60 seconds, it'll result in just a straight line for the track vector. Next, there's a new section for airspace settings to clean up your map if it's too cluttered. If you go into map settings, and then use the small FMS knob to change the group down to this new group called airspace, and then hit enter. You'll see a bunch of settings for each of the types of airspaces shown on the map. You can turn those on or off completely, or you can change the range at which they show up based on the map zoom level. Here I'm zoomed out to 75 nautical miles on the map, so none of them are showing up. As soon as I zoom down to 50 nautical miles or lower, you can see a bunch of them show up, including this military operation area. Next up, there are two new page groups, and the first one is the nearest page group. So again, to change page groups on the MFD, you use the large FMS knob. So you can see the one at the very end on the right is called nearest, N-R-S-T. So I'm going to scroll over to the right to highlight that. And you can see within it, there are four different pages. We have airports, intersections, NDBs, and VORs. So I'm going to use the inner knob to scroll up to the nearest airports page, and we'll start there. So here's the nearest airports page, this whole right side here of the MFD. At the top, you can see that it's already pre-selected the closest airport, which I happen to be on the ground at, and it shows it on the map. It'll automatically zoom the map and draw a dotted line from your location to the selected airport. Second, you can see the information about the airport, the runways, the frequencies associated with the airport, and there's a little scroll bar, so we know there are a bunch of frequencies in that list. And then finally, the approaches for that airport as well. To get our cursor to show up in these windows, we need to enable it by pushing the FMS knob. And remember, you do that by holding the left mouse button and then right clicking if you're using a mouse. So once I hit that, you can see the cursor get enabled in the top section, where it just says nearest airports, and the current airport is highlighted. Now at the bottom, there are these four soft keys, and these correspond to the four different areas on the right that we can actually move the cursor into. So we have runways, frequencies, approaches, and then airports. So if you push on one of these four soft buttons, it'll move the cursor to that area on the right panel. So if I hit runways, it's now highlighted on the runway. And if I hit frequencies, it moves it to the first frequency in the frequencies list, and so on. So once it's highlighted there, you can use the FMS knob to make your selection. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to the airport section at the top and scroll through the nearest airports. I use the outer FMS knob to do this. So as I scroll, again, you can see the map instantly zoom and pan and draw a line from our current location to the selected airport. So this is really useful if you suddenly need to get to the ground and you want to find, say, an airport that you're already heading slightly towards. So this would be a quick way to do that. So here I'm going to stop on KMMV. So this is the McMinnville Municipal Airport in Oregon. I can see that just shown in the information there. If I move the cursor down to runways, we can use the outer FMS knob to select between the different runways that are available. 
and it'll show us the runway length, width, and the type of surface at the runway. This is a hard surface runway. For the frequencies, again, hit the soft button to move down to that section. And then you can use the outer knob to select the appropriate frequency you're looking for. This lists not only communication frequencies, but here you can also see there's an ILS frequency as well. So it's comm and nav frequencies relevant to that airport. If I want to quickly use one of these frequencies, so for example, say I want to listen to the weather coming from the ASOS, I can highlight it right here. And instead of using the comm knob up here at the top to manually dial in, I can just hit the enter button. And that's going to put it in whichever standby field my cursor is on. So you can see I hit enter and it's put it in the standby field for COM1. Then I can just hit the swap button to activate that frequency and listen to the weather. If you want to put that frequency into the COM2 radio standby field instead, all you have to do is use the COM knob in the top right. So if I push that knob in, the small part of it, it'll move the standby frequency cursor down from COM1 to COM2. You can see it highlighted in blue now. So now when I hit enter on that ASOS frequency, it'll put it into the COM2 standby field instead of COM1. I happen to highlight a navigation radio frequency. So in this case, I'm highlighting the ILS for runway 22. If I press enter while I highlight that, it'll actually automatically put it into the nav one or nav two standby field instead of the comm field. It knows that it's a navigation frequency and not a communication frequency. So you can see here that I've quickly put that ILS frequency into both my nav one and nav two radio and activated both of those. So I'm tuned into the ILS on both of those radios. So now I've hit the approach button at the bottom to move the cursor to the approaches section. And this is a shortcut to get to the approaches. You can highlight one and then hit this load approach soft key as a shortcut to loading these approaches as well. In addition to the nearest page group, there's another new one called the waypoint page group. And what's nice about this is that it's a convenient way to put in a waypoint of any of these types, either an airport, an intersection, an NDB, or a VOR. So once again, we get there by using the outer FMS knob and move to the second page group called waypoint. Then you use the inner knob to select between the different pages of whichever type of waypoint you're looking up. So as an example, I've chosen the airport waypoint page. And what I can do is first turn the cursor on. So again, you do that by pushing the center of the FMS knob. You can see it turn the cursor on. I'm going to enable keyboard mode by clicking on the little white dot to the right, or you can click on the little flashing area itself. And now I can type with my keyboard. So if you have one attached, I highly recommend doing that. And I'm just going to type in a random airport. I'll just type in Portland and then turn the keyboard mode off by clicking again. Now that I've entered it, I can press the enter button to load the information for the airport. So you can see it instantly moves to show us the airport's location. I'm close enough to the Portland airport right now in the sim that it will load the taxiway diagram and stuff. If you're too far away, it won't load it. Um, but if you're nearby, it will. Here we can review the runways. So you can see there are multiple runways and I can go through them by using the small FMS knob. Now this is a little different from the previous page where you use the outer FMS knob. And that's because on the waypoint screen, using the outer FMS knob moves the cursor between the different sections. There are no soft keys at the bottom like there was back on the nearest page group. And all the features we had back on the nearest page group works for the waypoint page as well. I can choose a frequency and hit enter to automatically put it in my comm or my nav radios. There's also NDB and VOR information pages, and they work in a similar way. If you enter a VOR, so for example, here is the Uniform Bravo Golf VOR, which is just south of our current position. So if I type in UBG and then hit enter, it'll load information about that VOR, including the type of VOR, its lat long location, and also the magnetic variation of that VOR. And then there's the frequency there, which you can see is automatically highlighted. If I press enter while I'm on that, it'll load the VOR frequency into our chosen navigation radio. There's a super handy shortcut you should know to get to these waypoint pages where you don't have to manually type in the waypoints. And that is if you go to your flight plan and then enable the cursor by pushing the FMS knob, you can select any of these waypoints to automatically look it up by pressing enter once you highlight it. So here I've just looked up this intersection and it gives me the latitude and longitude. If I now go down and choose this VOR, Delta Sierra Delta, right here, I can hit enter again. It goes straight to the waypoint info for that VOR, including the frequency. 
So if I want, I can enable the cursor again and then hit enter on the frequency to quickly add it to my navigation radio standby field. Then I can just swap it to activate the VOR. Finally, we can highlight an airport and hit enter to go to the airport information page. And here you can see the airport name. You can see the elevation of the airport right here, 1,027 feet, the runway information, and all the associated frequencies. And as usual, say you wanted to quickly dial in an ATIS or ASOS frequency, you can move the cursor down with the FMS knob, highlight that frequency, and then press enter to put it in one of the standby fields for either COM1 or COM2, like we saw earlier, to quickly tune in and listen to the weather. The next feature is a VNAV Direct 2 button that's now available on the MFD. So what we can do with this is start a VNAV descent earlier than originally planned. So in this case, I'm headed to this initial approach fix called McCoy. And you can see the altitude constraint for this is 3,100 feet. And our current VNAV descent profile has our top of descent about four minutes away. So say we're able to descend sooner and I still wanna follow a VNAV profile. I've set my target altitude or selected altitude to 3,100 feet already to match the altitude constraint we're headed to. And what I'm gonna do now is just highlight the waypoint that we wanna to descend to earlier and hit this new VNAV direct button at the bottom. It asks us to confirm this, so I'll just hit activate by pressing the enter button on the right. And now it'll recalculate the VNAV profile based on starting sooner. So now our top of descent is only 30 seconds away. And as a result of starting the descent sooner, you can see the flight path angle is shallower now. It was a three degree standard descent rate, but since we're starting the descent early and we wanna follow VNAV smoothly down all the way to that point, the new profile is shallower at 1.5 degrees. So now I can just use VNAV mode on the autopilot to follow it as usual. Lastly, we have the Activate Vectors to Final option on our Procedures menu. Now, this is something you would use if air traffic control is giving you vectors or headings to fly to line you up with the final approach course. So here I've switched my autopilot to heading mode and I'm making a left-hand turn here as if ATC told me to fly a heading of 160. So this is turning us to the left off the course we were on and instead of going to every single waypoint, they're having us take a little bit of a shortcut and they're going to help us get onto that final approach course. Now what you can do in this case is use the activate vectors to final feature. And what this will do is clean up your map a bit and remove these unnecessary waypoints. So if I hit procedures menu, and then you can see here the activate vectors to final option, it's also available over here on the MFD. I'm going to go ahead and press enter to activate that. So just hit the enter key. And there's a little quirk and some known issues with this. I've noticed that I need to use it twice most of the time. So over here, I'm just gonna activate it a second time using the MFD this time. And now you can see that final approach course is drawn for us on the map. And you may also notice that the other waypoints that were part of this procedure have disappeared. So that's one downside to using this. It cleans up the map, but it may remove some of our situational awareness around those other waypoints. But what I can do now is use this as a guide to see which course we're going to ultimately be on when being vectored by air traffic control. Now, something that doesn't exist yet is the automatic switching of your navigation source to your navigation radio in the case you're using an ILS approach. So if you are on an ILS approach and ATC is vectoring you to get on that localizer course, make sure you hit the CDI button to change over to your localizer one or localizer two navigation source. That's it for the features I want to cover in 090. As always, you can find the full release notes from the working title team linked in the video description below. I'm really excited about the waypoint pages. I think those are a huge time saver, especially if you use that enter key shortcut to quickly look up airport information and find frequencies. It's awesome, and I'm really excited to use it more. As always, thanks so much for watching. Leave any questions, comments, and suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next video.